want to come on in. Hi guys. Hello, Mary Meets everybody. It's Michelle Marie Delaney, and today, of course, um, we're going to talk about a couple of very interesting points. Hello, and welcome to my world. Well, it's called Welcome to My World, you know that, and that's what this channel is. We talk about things, life, liberty, universe, bills, and uh, usually local issues that... Um, I really don't have too many local issues to talk about, but I did get something interesting from the electric company, and I wanted to tell it to you. Uh, I got the latest electric bill, and we talk about how climate warming, uh, global warming is a force, and this proves it, because um, at the day of typing this, it's May 7th, and um, it's really cold outside, and... Um, you compare the billing cycle of my electric bill, which, uh, let's see, as soon as this, let's see, doesn't tell me what the, what the service, t okay, well basically it's the whole month of April, okay, and, um, it says here, um, during the time of the dating of this uh, May 2nd electric bill, okay, it said that average usage, they call it May, it's really April, so let's just call it what it is. Average usage in April 2015 was 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Average usage of May 2016 is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's a pretty big difference in temperature. That's over 15 degrees Fahrenheit difference, um, between last year and this year for the same calendar time. Um, the kilowatt hour usage is lower too, but I don't think that's the part I'm really going to be focusing on. Except maybe I did notice something very interesting here. They charge a tremendous fortune for generating electricity. I never, the electricity generated... Generation service charge is not that much, okay? It's uh, 0 0.0709 um, dollars per kilowatt hour. In other words, about seven cents per kilowatt hour, okay? And when you add in all the taxes and distribution charges, Transmission charges, customer service charge. Why do you charge me nineteen twenty five for customer service charge? No, this is the kind of thing I ever screwed this yet. It makes me kind of make distribution charge. Uh, FMCC delivery charge. The biggest and most scary thing is the customer service charge. Uh, now, the next highest is the distribution charge. Um, it's like, okay, in other words, the point is, is my electric bill is lower, but, and the, um, what they're charging me for the customer service charge is about what, how much it costs me to generate the electricity from MX Energy in the first place. Okay? Uh, that's pretty high. I have to be honest with you. I think it's, I think it's an embarrassment. Um, this month, we're not going to have a lot of extra money to do anything. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're going to, we're going to get this mix to fix. I ordered the parts. We got parts for that coming. Um, and I'm going to put them in and, um, and get done with it. Okay, it shouldn't take too long overall because it's pretty simple. Just, But the point is, is even though the scientists from the International Panel for Climate Change, the IPCC, has saying, it actually it's called Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. Well, international panel is just as appropriate. Um, there are some scientists that are leaving the program and saying, you know what, this doesn't make any sense. If it's supposed to be global warming, one, how come there's still snow on Kilimanjaro? 
how come all the things that Al Gore talked about didn't happen? Well, let's put it this way. Global warming was just a theory that sounded too conveniently easy to make up a name to. The sad truth is what's really happening is what you're feeling outside right now on May 7th. And that is it's colder out there. It's not warmer. How can you say, oh, we're having climate change and being global warming when it's getting colder? That doesn't make any sense. If we really truly were having global warming, don't you think the temperatures would be getting colder? I mean, getting hotter? It's not. We're not going to be seeing hot temperatures until next week. And even then, it's going to get cold again. It doesn't say it's going to stay hot year-round, does it? No. The fact is, do you know what's causing this? The sun. That right. The big, giant fusion reactor in space that we use to provide all energy to our solar system, the sun, is cooling down a little bit. And because it's cooling down a little bit, the temperatures, that the energy that reaches the planets, and as they were all hot during global warming, Gee, that was kind of funny, because you think about it. In 2003, when you were talking about global warming, or actually, yeah, well, 2003, 2006, right? And the Inconvenient Truth came out. The first thing that came across to me was that here we are saying, as a planet, we're going to lower our CO2 emissions. But when you look at the rest of the planets and the solar systems, they were getting hot, too. Huh. Gee, that's interesting. So if the rest of the planets were getting really hot, too, then is it really human beings that are responsible for the actions? No, it's not. It's the sun. That's right. That big ball of fire in the sky. I forgot I had this card behind me. Um, for those of you who wonder about that, I'll talk about that in a second when we use this for um, The fact of the matter is, the big ball of fire in the sky is what makes it possible for us to go out there and to raise crops and grow food and all this other stuff. But you know what? The problem is, is the sun needs to take a break too. So it kind of lessens on its output for a while. Unfortunately, that has a negative impact on the earth. <coughs> the earth is always at a precious equilibrium spot, okay? It's a little bit too cold, and the Earth is a frozen ball of ice. Too a little bit too warm, and the Earth is uninhabitable to humans. Okay, uh, that means just like it sounds like. If the Earth is too warm, we can't live here comfortably. Okay, if the Earth is too cold, then we have to bundle up and wear extra layers of jackets. We can't grow crops, and everything dies. Unless you got crops growing in greenhouses, and of course we know how expensive that can be. Mm -hmm. So, to make a long story short is, as I said on a, my main channel, North American Snow Queen, um, is this event, this climate change, this major issue, is a giant dog and pony show. Al Gore did not do a good favor to anybody. Al Gore and his inconvenient truth. All he did was he was trying to sell his agenda. His agenda was is the earth is getting bad and we need to prepare for the day when all the animals and plants will die because it's too hot and, and the water will not be enough snow and ice. For drinking water to come down, a snowpack will be non-existent, and all that. Well, that's not going to happen at this point, okay? And last time that did happen, when we did have a lot of natural carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, this was a great time for the Earth in the prehistoric times. I forget which era. I think um, was I think it was the Jurassic era. You're talking about when plants. Plants were abundant. The oxygen levels of the Earth was the highest they would ever been. Okay? This planet was so steamy, so tropical all over. It was just not at all 
a place that I would want to go to for a tropical paradise. Uh, granted, the Zika virus would have enjoyed it if I'm carried by the Zika mosquitoes. They would have loved it. Granted. Um, all those insects that bite people and sting people do, but that's not the case. What we're seeing right now is the opposite. We're seeing a cooling trend. The cooling trend is caused just by the fact is that the sun is releasing less energy, less spurts of it, and the planet also has got a increase in volcanism. Now, <coughs> what does that have to do with the sun? Let's be honest. The Earth's crust is a giant, it's like taking an egg. For this example, an egg that's kind of, let's say, like a gooey chocolate in like a Cadbury mini egg or just a regular M&M, okay? And cracking the shell a little bit, okay? Now you got all these big cracks in the shell, right? Because that's the crust. Well, the Earth's mantle is super hot because of pressure. And as it's so hot, the Earth's crust is a liquid state. So what's happening is, is the, the the very thin crust, like on an eggshell, or an M&M candy, if you will, okay, is riding like giant barges on top of a liquid mantle. Okay? And this means that as the, te the whole Earth is constantly in whoa and swing with things like gravitational pull from the sun. So that means that when solar activity increases, it sends very strong waves to the, through our magnetos magnetosphere, which, of course, have an impact on the crustal plates. Because also, don't forget, our, our, our Earth's core is iron and molten iron. After all, remember, it's really hot down there. So it would not take much, I don't know how many Orsteds it's going to take for the... Um, the crust to be swayed by the magnetosphere deflecting. That's what I'm trying to get at. That's what causes quakes. The problem is, is the Earth also needs um, to find a way to relieve its own pressure. So what it does is it develops volcanoes uh, all around the cracks, all around the world. There's there's a crack. There's probably been a volcano or either above ground or, or subterranean, uh, like in the ocean. Okay. And this is also when you start to see um, potential quick zones. And the plates are also moving around, and sometimes they bump and bang into each other, which is bad for the people on the plates because they get rattled up pretty bad. Well, as the Earth's volcanoes are belching out huge amounts of sulfur, sulfur oxides and other things, and carbon dioxide gas, um, right? Um, see, you would think that alone would be increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And it is. In fact, it creates more CO2 in the atmosphere than anything mankind could ever do. Yeah, I don't hear Al Gore saying at the time, we well, shall go ahead and plug up all the volcanoes. It's like trying to put a plug into a pressure, temperature and pressure safety valve. If you do that, sure, you might stop it from hissing, but guess what? It's not going to save your ass and the whole planet explodes, right? Um, it also is really just plain stupid. Um, because that's the Earth's um, way of relieving excessive pressure buildup. It's, it's, it's just like the human body. I mean, think about it, okay? If you, you know anything about the human body, right? We are, unfortunately... A chemical factory um, you know we eat things right and we make chemicals and gases and things like that and they gotta come out somewhere <coughs> which usually comes out as a burps and farts now the earth burps and farts too for the same reason because it has to get rid of the excess pressure buildup so the earth is um, is producing a lot of its own heat. But the sun, of course, produces more. So what's going to happen is, eventually, um, 
if the sun stays in its minimum stage, and they say it could go even deeper than this, deeper than the modern minimum, you're talking about seeing temperatures like now dropping over 15 degrees Fahrenheit all around the world. Take, for example, the summer. I usually work in Celsius, so if I want to subtract 7 degrees, I can do that. All right, do this. Figure it out. If the average high in the summertime, um, we're talking about the peak of summer, which is like about, say, 27 degrees. Let's say the temperature now is only 20 degrees. Okay? So from about 90 degrees down to about, um, is that right? I don't know. You figure it out. Well, I know, 25, okay. Well, my point is, is, it's a lot of a drop. It's a lot of a drop. Now, you can imagine what that's going to do for crops. Some crops are very temperature sensitive. Others don't care so much about the temperature as long as they don't freeze. But that also does mean that the growing seasons are going to be shorter and that's not going to help anybody else. So, yeah, you're going to see colder temperatures, but you're also going to see human beings are going to try to use their knowledge of infrastructure to try to protect the infrastructure. How so? Well, for example, just like we do now, we, we grow food in temperate regions in the world. Say, for example, Florida and parts of California, right? We grow vegetables and fruits and produce. And, of course, in the areas that have good grasslands, we, go, we, go, we, we, we raise, you know, beef cattle, you know, and um, chickens and hogs and things like that. That's great. <laughs> but um, the biggest problem is, is that means, given what we're talking about for the produce areas, we're going to be growing more of our foodie on the equatorial regions. Some places may very, very well, do very well and others may not. Our Earth population is so large that the last time we have faced a significant cooling trend was about 10,000 years ago. And we were just a small, we lost almost all of our human beings. The human race is almost entirely made extinct. We were on the endangered species list. So you think about that, and then you're talking about now is we're saying it's because we have airplanes and trucks and trains and that we can transport our food from warehouses down, say, down by Florida up to Connecticut and then distribute in the store through distribution systems. That's great, but, you know, what happens if the system infrastructure fails? And it could fail. Because there is also concerns about a very serious earthquake potential. It's called the New Madrid Fault. The New Madrid Fault is becoming active. Now, it's not as famous as the San Andreas. But when that thing goes, given where it's located in the middle of the United States... A variety of natural gas, water, electric lines, railroads, transportation hubs go right there. It's going to potentially be one nasty disaster. And so for people who really need to get off their high horse and saying is, we have the technology, we'll survive this. No, we don't have the technology that's going to guarantee to be there. So don't tell me it will be. The San Andreas Fault in California pops. We already know about that one. We've been preparing it in California. We've been preparing that for, for, for since, you know, for a long time. At least since 1916 with the Great San Francisco Quake. 1913 was it? Something like that. Okay. The problem was, guess what? It's locked it's ready to rumble, and it's going to, and it's potentially going to cause a shift as it grinds into the other plate. On the what the um, Pacific place is going to run into the I don't know what the other place is running into, but 
They're, they're ramming up against each other and they're rubbing really hard. And uh, there's a lot of force behind that. So it's going to potentially cause a lot of giving and shaking and a lot of very scary things. And also don't forget we got the Cascadia fault line too. And we have all these fault lines. So if you think just because we're going to start growing food, say down to Florida... That everything is going to be all great and we're all going to be singing Kumbaya. We're all going to be roasting marshmallows over a campfire at night. Not necessarily. Because the sad truth is that if you look what happened, um, our infrastructure is very fragile. So it wouldn't take much to disrupt the whole system. Oh. Anyway, so you need to prepare for that and you need to be ready to deal with that because that's a serious problem for everybody. Well, I know it's... I, I really hope you think about that and, and I hope you are considering the reality of just how safe and how secure you are. But if you really think global warming was, a, was real, it's not, you need to be prepared for the opposite effect. Global cooling is going to be much more devastating to humans than global warming was. Remember, 10,000 years ago, human beings were almost extinct. We were, almost in, we were on the endangered species at, um, list. Um, so you need to prepare for that. That the environment is not there to protect you. And um, All right, guys. Uh, for That's it for all. Thank you for very much watching this, and I hope you continue to watch these videos here on Welcome to My World. I know sometimes the videos are great, and sometimes they're wonderful, and you learn something new, and sometimes they're crappy, and you don't learn anything new, and yeah, that happens, you know. I'm not really feeling that well right now, and I'm trying to get this in because I have to uh, get in the, the DVD media, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm going to be trying to keep up with all the stuff in the political and stuff like that, too. And um, I didn't get a chance to get much sleep last night because I was coughing up a storm and uh, I wasn't feeling too good. And I still don't feel that well. So um, I'm really going to, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching this. And I hope that you will continue to... Uh, Share these videos with your friends, your family, whoever you may know. Um, the If you would like to make a donation to the cause, there is a the address and phone number is at the end. So we could definitely use your help because, uh, you know, these utilities that run the studio do get very expensive. And as I said, you know, every dollar you pay as a donation can help us to buy new equipment and and to keep the uh, videos coming and, and make sure that because we still have to fix some of the equipment that's you know getting old and I do have a couple of things planned for the near future um, but you know it's just like the CCR said you know with the song someday never comes you know I can always say in the future but then I realized that sometimes it just never happens don't work out that way. Uh, but uh, I do have plans to get some new stuff for the studio. And I am prepared, at least mostly for the cold spells uh, that are coming. But some people are not even ready emotionally. Emotionally, it's going to take a lot more to readjust to the new paradigm with the weather. But you can start, at least it's one preparation you can start to do is prepare for the the colder weather and the, and the rainier weather because we're going to be seeing more rain as we're going to be seeing more upper atmosphere disturbances. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching this and uh, I thank you and I hope that this will give you some inspiration and you can send your email comments to um, both on the YouTube Welcome to My World channel and of course to the email address and the U.S. mail address is in the contact information at the end of this video. And uh, we will listen to what you got to say. And if you email it to us or if you send us U.S. mail, I will try my best to respond to your questions online in the next video as fast as I can.
But please understand, I do two videos at a time on the DVD format. I keep the cable company, so it'll always be about at least uh, two videos behind. So, but we will try to answer as many questions as you can and hope that you will uh, be come up with some good questions. Okay? So that's it for all now, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our websites? Are you watching all four of them? If not, check them out. There's a list right here. We got three YouTube channels and one audio-only channel for your enjoyment. So come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace.